New Thought Media Network proudly presents Lindsay Limbach Practicing Infinite Possibilities Fridays at 10 a.m. Mountain Time, 9 a.m. Pacific Welcome to PIP Friday mornings. Well, Friday mornings here in California. So I hope everybody has their cup of coffee, right? To relax. But on the East Coast, of course, it's lunchtime. So I hope you have some lunch. Thank you for joining me. Hey, shout out to Jackie. Thank you for coming. She's actually seeing me on YouTube. Isn't that cool? So cool. So it turns out there's lots and lots of ways you can see me on Facebook. Some of you see me there and you might be seeing me on different YouTube or maybe you are seeing me on New Thought, the New Thought Media Network website or their Facebook page. Wherever you're seeing me, I'm really, really glad and I am so thankful. And I also want to have a shout out to my producers, Audrey and Laura. Oh, guys. Infinite possibilities are happening because they're here with me, with you. So I want to start us off with telling you guys a story. Now, before I tell you the story, I want to show you my earrings. See how they're reflecting? Isn't that cool? They're mirrors. There's this wonderful story I heard, and it really spoke true to me. There was this monk, and he was always carrying around a mirror. And the head monk would be like, oh my God, why is he carrying around a mirror all the time? You know, monks are meant to be simplistic, like simplicity with my sign behind me. You're meant to be, you know, not vain. They're not meant to own anything. They're meant to be really in the present moment. And here he's got this mirror. How vain is he? And he's like, I am going to go and confront him and kick his butt out. <laughs> Okay, I guess he didn't say kick his butt out, but I he did say something like that. So he walked up to that monk and he said, I see you have a mirror. And he pulled it out and he says, yes, I do. He goes, and why do we have a mirror here in the temple? Are you that vain? And he looked at it and he said, oh no, oh no. I have this mirror and I use it every day because when I have a problem, I hold up the mirror and before I start to blame, before I start to say the problem is their problem, I look in the mirror and I say, ah, everything starts with me. Wow. Wow. Isn't that in just incredible? This is why I got these at an art studio with the mirrors in my earrings. And the truth is, as we all know it, Everything starts with you. And that's where we're going to go today. Today, we are going to be talking about how to actually practice infinite possibilities, practice mindful living while driving, meaning that when you're driving, you will practice. And by practicing driving, mindful living into a higher consciousness, you will actually bring more calm, more peace, more resilience. But we got to set that up because we're not going to dive right in there. We got to get some basis on why that can be true. So let's start with vitamin G. Have you guys taken your vitamin G today? What is vitamin G? Vitamin G is gratitude. Have you taken your daily, daily dose of gratitude today? And it's really important that we start that way. When you start with this thankful heart, right? There's so much science. And maybe I'll maybe in about two weeks, I'll do a whole class on gratitude and the science of gratitude. But when you bring yourself into gratitude, what you're able to do is be the observer, to be able to reflect on what is going on in your world around you in a 
positive way, with a positive filter. So what are you grateful for today? Now, of course, you can be grateful that you have a house, I hope, or an apartment or a safe place to live and that you have food in the refrigerator. Sometimes that's the place we have to start. Maybe we just even start that we're grateful to be alive. But can you bring it down to the smallest thing? The smallest thing. I am grateful that we have this technology, that we can share this moment. You realize, I know some of you guys are going to see this recorded, but this is live. And that we get to share these teachings, this thought process together, that we can connect our energy together right now. Wow. That's crazy cool stuff. I am so grateful for that. So grateful for that. So we want to start every day by taking our vitamin G. Now, if you remember back on my first course class, I guess I will say the first class with New Thought Media, and you can go and see them in the archives. Um, I talked about the brain. So we have the lower brain, the middle brain, and the higher brain. The lower brain is really your basic functions. There it is. So your automatic functions such as digestive, hunger, sleep, regulation. You got regulatory of temperature. You have to have that going. It has the basic fight, fight, and freeze response in it. All animals have it. Then you have your middle brain. That is where you have your higher level of thinking, but it has memory. It has your habits in there. It's what's making me different than my dog or with you. The books I've learned that are meaningful, the experiences I have, trauma is even in there. How you hug, how you hold hands, what you like, all that is in that middle part of the brain. And then we have our executive higher cortex thinking. Okay. And that is our be able to have that higher level of compassion, observation, right? Being able to make choices, to override habits, to learn new skills. That's all up in here. So when I'm saying to you, have you taken your vitamin G today? I'm asking you to get out of that lower brain and get into that higher brain. Get up in here. Gratitude is in your higher brain it pulls you out of all those old habits that you have where you just actually are an automatic pilot when you go on to gratitude you're activating the higher part of your brain and you are not on automatic pilot you are observing what's really going on so mindfulness as we know okay and this is why i do mindful living practicing in the present moment without judgment. So can you practice and see the world in the present moment as it is without those old stories that are stored in that middle part of the brain, pull yourself up into the higher part of the brain, observe what's going on, right? And then take in gratitude and when we take in the gratitude into our brain, then we take the gratitude and we start putting it into the middle brain because that's your memory. Wow. And that leads us to neuroplasticity, which was the class that I spoke about last Friday. There you go. What you think about, you bring about. Neurons that fire together, wire together. Like the path of snow we talked about last week, we are walking through the snow. It's hard the first time to walk through the snow. It's hard to do or learn new things. That's why you need to practice new things in our brain because we're connecting those neurons that are flying together and wiring together, right? We're practicing getting those neurons together. And like walking through a deep uh, field of snow for the first time, it's difficult. But the second time, it's easier. The third time, it's easier. The Fifth time you've connected those neurons together, and the brain says, Man, I know what I'm doing. And it goes, and then it goes, and it goes faster and faster. Just like if you're running through snow, you get a pathway sooner or later, you can run through it. But it takes practice. So, for practicing infinite possibilities, means that we need to open our mind and try new steps. And gratitude is such a good way to start stepping in areas that you haven't thought about before right because it's pulling it up here 
This is all such great stuff. So this brings us back to what I've been talking about, the A, B, C's of PIP. A, B, C's of PIP. I want you guys to think about this. Okay. A, you have to be aware. Aware is going on. If you are not aware of your habits or your body or your reactions, how can you change it? How can you change it? That's the big question. So awareness is so important. It's so important to mindfulness. It's so important from going from that lower level of thinking, being aware that you're having, I like to call it caveman thinking, that old caveman thinking. And the awareness allows you to shift, to make a conscious choice. This is what God gives us, what energy gives us, whatever you want to call it. The universal energy gives us the ability to be aware of what we're doing and then making that shift to gratitude, making that shift into other choices, making that shift knowing that there are infinite possibilities, even if you don't know what they are. So we have to take awareness. So that's A. Then B, breath. So if I'm aware that I'm having a really good time, eh, I can take a little breath and then make more choices. But if I am being triggered, if I am being triggered and I'm having that lower level fight, flight, freeze response is hitting your body, you can feel the stress in your neck, your shoulders come up, your heart starts to race, your digestion's bad, you get a stomach ache. Oh, your eyes hurt. I mean, I could go on and on with the stress reaction, how the body goes into symptoms of stress reaction. Your body is not, uh, is like a lie detector. It'll tell you the truth of what's going on, even though you could be in denial about it. So when you become aware of that, then you need to take that breath and then breathe out. We talked about when you feel that stress or when you feel that you're in a situation that you don't want to be in, you take your breath in and then you hold it a little bit and then you release it longer because that activates that parasympathetic nervous system, which is actually in the lower part of the brain. Have you ever seen your dogs panting? <laughs> they're activating when they're nervous, they're activating their parasympathetic nervous system to the lower part of the brain to relax them down. So they can then go into the C, which is choice. And choice is made up in the prefrontal cortex. Because when you're doing habits, you're not making choices. You're an automatic pilot, right? So we want to have awareness, breath, longer breath out, and then come up to, I could like to call it our God consciousness, our higher consciousness, the ability to know, hey, I can let this go over here and open up to the infinite possibilities. I might not know what they are yet, but I'm not going to be reacting from a fight, flight, caveman thinking where you feel like you have to overtake someone or run away or people please. There's all these reactions we have that are programmed. All right. So all this, you're like, wow, Lens, that's a lot of information. And we haven't even started the driving. But all this is really important for us to understand because we also want to know knowledge gives us wisdom. And then wisdom in action gives us change. So I am helping you with knowledge. You take this information, you see how it's true for you. How is it true for you? Okay. And however it is true for you, that becomes your wisdom. And then you need to take action. Now, here's another tip that I want you to know about the brain. It's called, it's called confirmation biased. All brains do it. Confirmation. I have the, the um, right here from the Oxford Dictionary. It says the tendency to interpret new evidence and confirm ones that exist, the beliefs or theories we already have. So confirmation bias means that the brain is looking in the world for information out there that confirms how we already feel. Ah, remember now, where do we already, what's going on here? We have that middle part of our brain 
And we have a lot of beliefs and ideas about ourselves. I'm dumb. I'm stupid. I'm not lovable, whatever it is, right? So you have that belief system in here. And then someone says something to you and you're like, hey, lady, you're crazy. And you're like, oh my God, everyone thinks I'm crazy. He thinks I'm crazy. And you own it as your truth because it's confirming something that you already feel about yourself. Now, why do we have this? Because the brain can't take in all this information, guys. Every day, so much information is going on. So it has to set in an info, it has to set up a filter system. And so it says, what's important to you? But this filter system is neutral. If you feel bad about yourself, it's going to confirm, it's going to use a filter system to prove that to be true. If you feel good about yourself, it's going to use a filter system to prove that true. Go back to what you think about, you bring about. I really want you guys to take this. What you think about, you bring about, because what you believe is what your brain is going to recognize in this infinite amount of energy, infinite amount of information coming in all the time, all the time. You cannot pay attention to everything. How your clothes feel, what's going on in your sight, what are you smelling, right? Those are things. What people are saying around you. If you're in a coffee store and there are people talking, you're, what's important to you is in front of you. And so you will then be listening to the person in front of you and not all the people chattering around you. It's amazing that the brain can do this, but it works to our benefit, but it also can work to our detriment if we are looking or paying attention to negativity. So let me take that a little step further. Prop. Yeah. Make spaghetti, whatever. You know, this is your normal strainer from your kitchen. We have something like this, and I'm not kidding you, okay? This is for real, okay? So in the lower part of your brain, it's like my hat. How do I look? In the lower part of your brain, down here, you have a filter, like a strainer, okay? It's called your RAS. It's called your RAS, your rec reticular activating system. Everybody has it. And really what it is, is a filter between your nervous system on this lower level part of your brain and your higher consciousness. This filter system that we're talking about right now is saying you can't take in all the sensations. Like how do your feet feel to the ground, the ground right now? Well, now once I've made you think about that, you can feel your feet in your shoes or your socks or touching the ground because now that's become important to you. And your ass says, oh, that information can come up. I'm going to allow that information up because we said to the RAS, that's important. So you all can recognize that. But before I said that, I doubt any of you were feeling your feet. Hopefully you were right here with me, right here with me, listening to what I'm having to say, because your ass is saying, oh, that's important. So I'm going to tune everything else out. Okay. Now, what is programming your ass? You're not programming my ass. I'm programming my ass. What I think is important or what I hold in my consciousness, what I hold in my consciousness becomes my wrath. And what I hold as danger from past experiences becomes my wrath. This is the way the brain works, guys. So what is programming your wrath? You are. And how are you programming it? Mm. Well, if you're not doing it consciously with higher awareness, let me tell you right now, then whatever you're paying attention to is programming your ass. So if you woke up this morning and you put on that local news and you heard about five different murders and the inflation going on and the disease and the mayhem, you have now programmed your ass to say that's important to you. And as you walk through the streets, you will, your RAS will dictate all of that to go into your mind to validate you. But how did we start? 
Did you take your vitamin G today? Right? Ah, you mean that I want gratitude to be part of my RAS, that I want to be higher consciousness, that I want to have simplicity. That's why I have my sign back here. Yeah, there it is. Simplicity, kindness, love, generosity. That is your program. Who's programming this? You are. Choose it every day. You get to choose it and it takes practice. All right, now let's dive into the driving. I know you got us up into 20 minutes, Linz, into a program, and now you're getting the driving. But it's so important for you to understand that when you, how do you practice driving, you know, your infinite possibilities of a higher consciousness, of God consciousness, of love consciousness while driving? Okay, so you're in your car and you're driving along, okay? And a lot of times people are driving. Uh, not mindfully, right? They're on automatic pilot. When's the last time you even remember when you drove to work, you remembered that you were driving to work? Yeah, you're not. So what you want to do is bring yourself into the pro present moment, not into that worried mind, not into the radio telling you all this incredibly negative news, right? What you want to do is bring yourself in the present moment and really be present. So mindful meditation is when you're super present and um, paying a paying attention to one thing. Well, this time it's driving and you're going to be really aware of your driving, really aware of your driving. Okay. Now here's a big, a big thing that's really great. And it's one of the tools I tell all of the people I coach or the classes I teach is when you get to a stoplight, Okay, and there's a stoplight in front of you. And let me tell you, I have five stoplights from the freeway to my home. So there's a lot of stoplights. So I get to practice this all the time. And I see green. I see green. It's a green light. Then I have now been able to practice and gratitude. And I'm like, I am so grateful I have a green light. I realize it is my trigger. It is a way to help me practice gratitude. And then I am grateful that I'm in my car. I'm grateful that I'm going to where I am. I'm grateful that I'm alive. I'm grateful for my husband and for my kids and for my friends and for all the people I work with. And I have a grateful moment. So green lights trigger uh, a gratitude. When I see yellow lights, then I'm like, ah, become super aware. It's like, come on, be aware, be aware of what's going on. Be aware of the present moment. It pulls me right back in there. It is that wonderful catch. Hey, should I stop? Should I go? But aware of everything. It really helps me. It's like that. Hey, Lindsay, back to the present moment. So yellow does that for me. And then red. Well, in the old days, I would hit red and I think, oh my God, I can't believe it. I have a red light and I'm light and rah, 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 rah. all that mind, right? What are you doing? You're programming that you're upset to be more upset, right? Neuroplasticity, what you think about, you bring about. So instead, when I get the red light, I actually go, oh, thank you. Thank you for the red light because I get to relax get to relax. I get to just take some deep breaths. I don't need to talk to anyone on the phone. I don't need to do the dishes. I don't need to write a report. I don't need to pay the bills. The universe is giving me just this time to take a breath. It is so powerful that a red light is a gift instead of a curse. Oh, another red light. Obviously, the universe, God, or whoever, my higher self wants me just to take a breath and relax. So if you practice this with the lights, green is gratitude, yellow is awareness, and red is relaxation, then you're actually doing a mindful living practice while you're driving. While you're driving. Okay, let's take it one step further. One step further. You get a red light. Now, remember I told you about confirmation bias and your RAS. Well, we tend to really like people that are like ourselves. 
We think we're not racist. We think that we don't have bias against other people, but we surround ourselves and with people that are tend to be just like us. They either look like us or they act like us. You know, they're our choice because they're validating ourselves. So when you're at a red light, you get a chance to witness a whole bunch of different people that are you're not interacting with. They're just driving by in all different cars. And I like to sit there for that time and look at the different people and say, I love you. I love you too. And if you're uncomfortable with saying that, you can say, I bless them. And what you're doing is I'll see people with stickers on their car that are not politically aligned with me or something. You know, they have a hunting rack, I'm not into hunting, hunting rack on the back of their truck or whatever. I wouldn't run up to that person and go, oh, I love you. But I need to learn to allow myself to love other people, no matter who they are. I don't have to agree with them. I can love them for the humanity of them. I can love them because I can learn that we're all coming from the same God, all from the universal energy. So it gives me practice to take in and look at other people and love them as they go past me. I bless you. I love you. I bless you. I love you. I bless you. I love you. Wow. What is it you're doing? You're changing that middle path. You're changing that rasp guys, you're changing that people have to be like you for you to feel comfortable about them. It's a wonderful practice. It's a wonderful practice. So let's take that a little bit further. Okay. Now you're in a traffic jam. What are you going to do there? Oh, I'm light. I can't believe it. This is happening to me. We, the traffic is going so slow. Listen, once again, the serenity prayer, you only can control what you personally control within. You can't control the outside. So what can I do on the inside to empower myself? What can I do on the inside to empower myself? All right. What I do is I bless all the other people in the traffic jam. See, suffering can lead to compassion. If I'm suffering in my car, so is all these other people, right? They're all having the same feeling. So instead of being frustrated with all the other people, I can say, listen, we're all sharing this experience and I can just send blessings to them all. Now let's take it one step further than that. There is a reason why there's a traffic jam most of the time, an accident, something like that's happened. So now I need to send a prayer to the person who is in the accident. I need to send a prayer to the first responders. I need to send a little blessing prayer to all the people who are about to get phone calls that they do not want, right? Now I'm in the traffic jam and I'm actually doing a relaxation practice of feeling myself interconnected with everyone. How does that make me feel? I want you to know that makes me feel awesome. It makes me feel awesome from being there. You don't have a choice about getting out. So you got to let that one go and take the opportunity to have this experience and send blessings. So let me tell you a, um, a I want to tell you a story. I saw Carolyn Mace, who is a wonderful teacher and author, um, live many years ago in LA. And she told of this story. She had a friend, okay, and her friend told her this story. So what happened was, is her friend was in a traffic jam and there was an accident and she knew there was an accident. So she sat there and she prayed for the person in the accident. And just sent out a prayer, kind of like what I've been telling you. This is why actually how I got this idea many, many years ago, listening to Carolyn Mace. So shout out to her. She's awesome. And then what happened was a couple months later, someone came knocking on her door, knocked on her door. And she opened up the door and there was a lady with flowers. And the lady said, I know you don't know me. But I was in a car accident a couple months ago or it might've been a year, I don't remember the timeline. And she said, and I left my body, I was dying. And I came out and I could see and look down. 
all the cars. I could see what was going on. This makes me want to cry. She said, I saw you praying. I saw a beam of light from your car praying for me. And when I was out of my body, I could see your license plate. And then I came back to my body and I remembered. And I looked up through your license plate who you are. And I'm bringing you these flowers because I want to thank you. Wow. You don't know. You don't know. When you bless people, they, you don't know what it does to their soul. You don't know what it does to their energy. I can tell you it feels good to you. But I have a feeling that it feels great to them. All right. I have realized that I have so much more to talk about driving. And I want to talk about road rage and why we do road rage and why we get so upset and why other people get so upset when they drive. So I gave you some tools today and they were really um, the ones with the light and the blessings and the traffic jams. And then to witness people that look way different to you and send them love. So you can start really feeling comfortable in loving other people, except for people that look just like you right? Or act just like you or drive the cars that you drive. Oh, pedestrians. Oh, at a stoplight, bless all the pedestrians. Those are really easy. You know, being the present, my, oh, I love that older man. Oh, I love that woman. Oh, bless them, bless them. Send them joy. You're, you're, by the time you get out of the car, if you do this, you are rocking this world with the higher consciousness. Okay, but back to next week. Okay, I am. I, I was going to talk about the science of joy, but I realized I want to keep going with this. This is so good. So I'm going to see you guys next Friday, right? Either on, on the West Coast with your coffee or on the East Coast, right, with your sandwich. And we're going to talk more about why we get upset in our car, why other people, maybe you don't, but you don't understand why other people do, and how you how you can change that. How can you adjust that? How can you be aware that you're getting upset? And then how can you make that shift, right? So we're going to be practicing the infinite possibilities, the pips while driving. Even if we get upset, we can do it. So you guys have homework. This week, I want you guys to practice the blessings and also the green gratitude, the yellow awareness, and the red relaxation for the lights. And come back to me. Tell me how you're feeling. You know, check in. Remember, I can't tell if you're on unless you say hi through the comments. So, you know, but it's okay. Also know that this is recorded and you guys can send this out to anyone, especially if people have difficulty in driving or they get anxious in driving. This would be a great video for them to see. Remember that I have an upcoming class. It's online. Okay, there it is. Mindful awareness and practice to heighten your happiness. And Rick Hansen is awesome. He is a neuropsychologist out of Berkeley. I've taken many classes, read many of his books. Neurodharma is one of his magnificent books. I'm basing this five class Zoom uh, class um, on his work. He really is one of my favorite. It is $85, but if you need financial assistance, I want you there. I want you to be part of this Zoom class, part of this community. You know, let's, let's keep going with this. It's, it's a practice. And it's so wonderful when we can practice with people that we can feel vulnerable so we can do the re reprogramming. Let's do it together on Wednesdays. Oh, by the way, it is taped. So if you, while well, I'm on holiday, that's fine. I send out the recording so you never miss one. So I want to also come back and really thank New Thought, uh, the New Thought Media Network. Remember, oh, thanks for putting that up, Audrey. That's my website, centeredmoment.com. Email me at centermoment at gmail.com if you want to be part of the class. I'll help you out. It's not until August. You got some time to figure it out. But once again, I really want to thank New Thought Media Network for giving me this opportunity. Uh, they're doing all this. They're nonprofit. It's free. Remember that you can donate to them to support 
many, many of their wonderful, wonderful teachers. Uh, shout out to Reverend Melissa. I want you to know I watch her show on New Thought Media Network every day at 7.30 my time. She's part of my morning practice. She's the real deal. She's awesome. But you're the real deal. We're all the real deal because we're all part of the same infinite energy of God. And I just love you all. <sighs> Have a terrific week. Practice mindful driving. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Gratitude. Take your vitamin G. New Thought Media Network proudly presents Lindsay Limebach. Practicing Infinite Possibilities. Fridays at 10 a.m. Mountain Time, 9 a.m. Pacific.